so now that my tanks, which are tank over there, UAT over there, those are sort of done. I'm happy with them and the state they're in. I'm going to turn my eye to the electronics. Um, you saw me pull out the tank and you can see that there is a mess of wires in here. And I like clean wiring. Um, so I'm going to start working on that portion of the jet. Uh, the only thing that is looking like I'm going to wind up replacing is this back here and the reason for that is it has selectable output. Let me zoom in on that. Um, so it has selectable outputs which can be controlled by this button here and what I found out is that I set it to 8.4 volts but when I measure the actual voltage coming out of these leads it was more like 7 volts. When I set it to 7.2, it was pushing out like, I don't know, 6, 6 point something volts. So something is wonky with this. It'll probably work, but I'm going to get rid of this. And instead, we're going to use our trusty Smooth Flight 16. Now, this is going to be a gyro and a power distro for the entire jet. And like I've said before, I love these guys because um, very customizable and you can use it with any type of battery chemistry. Um, I will test the servos in this jet and if they can handle, you know, a 2S LiPo, that would be great because then I will only have, you know, three 2S LiPos. One for the gear, one for this guy, um, and two for, for the smooth flight and obviously the turbine battery. So that's sort of how I set up my T45. But with that, I don't actually need this, assuming the servos can handle uh, 2S LiPo. And if not, maybe I'll just use a 6.6-volt a LiFi or something. So that's the plan. Um, what I will usually do is label these, figure out my tray placement, and then I, I will show you sort of the end result of how I decided to lay things out. So I have done some uh, preliminary cleanup. And what I've done is, so this is the uh, mixer board that comes with the jet. Um, I don't think I'm going to use that for two reasons. One, um, I have the smooth flight unit, which is capable of a lot more mixing, and that's what I want to use anyway. And two, uh, the smooth flight unit is going to be um, so much more clearer in terms of what maps to what channel. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. But on the surface, you can see I have cleaned up my wiring. So there's basically two, uh, two big sets of wires. So there's the sort of the left-hand side and there's the right-hand side. And as always, I like to label all of my connections so you can see like that says, for example, light right, um, flap left and whatnot. And so that way, um, wires don't get lost. So the wiring is coming um, along pretty well. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how I decided to do my wiring. But you don't have to do it this way, but I prefer it. So all the servo wires that are coming from sort of the back, um, gear and whatnot, what I like to do is chop off the servo connection ends and add these locking connectors. Um, I have used these before. And the beauty of these is that, A, they're locking, and what this allows me to do is, because I'm going to have a smooth flight unit, um, if I create a wiring harness and that's fixed, and all I need to know is which channel they connect up, up top to the smooth flight at. Um, so this guy is going to sit somewhere on the top deck. So what I can do is just, like, make a harness that adapts these connections to the actual servo connections you don't have to do that you can go straight like i said using just you know these servo connectors but what i like about this is that it leaves my wiring clean so if you can see now i have you know like for example uh, my aileron right and my my flap right and that's all hooked up to wing so i have these um connections that are just fixed and so all of that wiring mess now comes up and shows up as multiple locking connectors that are there are labeled so that to me 
makes for very you know clean and trouble shootable wiring which is what I'm looking for and I did the same uh, with the the wheels and the brakes so those come in through here and you can see it's the same style connections uh, so like so those are my my right gear uh, the brakes are underneath there so I can pull it up but you can kind of see um, my index finger there and those go into the let's zoom out here and angle down those go into the AG63 um, gyro and then from the AG63 we go and connect to the JP retract controller um, and also to the nose gear so that's what's encased in this snake skin material and then again uh, this jet comes with uh, this piece of electronics up here which is a looks like a receiver controlled switch but it needs its own power and then there's a signal wire so I just hooked that up again to a locking connector you can see that and so once I'm done with this it's just gonna be a bunch of uh, these locking connectors and the wiring here should be very clean for me to follow I'm gonna do the same for these guys so all of these wires will just connect to a harness and that harness then plugs into the top and what I like about that design is that like I said if, when it's time to service this jet everything comes apart real easy um, there is one disadvantage which is that replacing servos now requires me to sort of splice in the servo into the harness unless there's a connection an extension somewhere in line but I'm not worried about that I have the tools to do that as well so so far this is coming along well and I will uh, keep going at it so I think I have finally finished uh, the F5 and all the wiring that's involved and this is what my layout sort of looks like right now so we have the smooth flight and uh, you can see I cleaned that up with a grommet so everything comes from the bottom and comes up and then my receiver I have one that's right under this space one antenna goes this way the other one goes that way as expected and that's a 2.4G um, RS uh, receiver uh, from FreeSky and then the second receiver, you can see the wire goes underneath and that comes up to the front through here and that's a 900 megahertz antenna and that sits right here. Um, so we have 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz for receiver redundancy and frequency redundancy. And then my battery connectors come out to the front um, uh, but these can be moved. Obviously I left room back here I'm about to CG the plane just in case so I could have at least a uh, couple of batteries well, one over here and another over here if I need to for CG but I suspect and I'm hoping that they all wind up coming in the front area over here but pretty happy with how this worked out um, there is one tip that I'd like to share cool. so I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see we have this sort of cloth tape um, that I use especially where I can't use um, heat shrink because for whatever reason I forgot or it's gonna be a pain so like you can see here to wrap my snake skin and this stuff is called Tessa tape and you can find this on Amazon and this is really good stuff because it's cloth and then it's got adhesive on the back and this is what they use for car wiring harnesses and I love this stuff because it's easy to put on it leaves a very nice clean look it's cloth it's smooth so it provides chafing uh, resistance and it also leaves your bills looking clean so that's what I'm using for these stuff and it's pretty easy to remove um, you just undo the the wrapping and you're done so other thing that I did is I finished up my flap um, you can see that here and like I said in all the other control surface videos, 
I put a carbon rod that's just to make sure it doesn't bend um, and it also just provides a clean look on the outside uh, so. one other thing that I did is install the screws that go in the wing um, and there's four so one in here one in there and similar for the other side of the wing and these are I believe M3 uh, machine screws it was a very tight fit but they're in now um, so that's good. Okay, final step is attaching the missile rails, these guys. And in your hardware package, there are going to be four wood screws um, that look like those guys right there. Just like that, two screws in, and the armament and the missiles are on. So jet is uh, pretty much complete uh, so it's time to check the CG and for that I'm using a kit or a weight uh, checking kit from Sky RC I love this this kit and um, so that's the guy I'm using and as you can see right now uh, I have my CG about 94 millimeters ahead of the mains um, ideally I want it to be 90 and that works out to be 286 millimeters from the leading edge where that meets the fuselage and by that I mean right here so from this point back right around here is about 286 millimeters and that from the center of the mains is about 90 uh, millimeters so looks good I have my UAT full and it looks like with a full UAT I weigh about 7.4 kilos total that's the number up here so I think that should be perfect perfectly matched for 85 newtons so you know with 1800 cc of fuel I don't know how much that adds maybe two kilos thereabout it's gonna be a perfect match for this jet